Ow. Ow. I'm okay. I think I'm okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Phil the Conquista Dork. It is almost the last day of August. <laughs> uh, and you know what that means. It means it's time for a new Universal Yums box. Oh, Universal Yums, how I love you so very, very much. This one was actually delayed a little bit because of the Olympics. And that is because this particular box is from Brazil. That's right, Brazil. We've got some wonderful tasty treats to try out here. Uh, so they had some shipping problems. So it took a minute to get these out, but... I'm so very happy that they did because these look wonderful. Let's start from the beginning. This is called the Torcida Pimenta Mexicana. Uh, in Brazilian culture, few things are bigger than soccer. Soccer is called Hogo Bonito, which translates to beautiful game. Brazilians love their beautiful game, and it makes its way into every aspect of their society. They often take off work to watch matches, with local banks closing three hours prior to Brazil's soccer matches. The love of soccer has even made its way to snacks. This spicy, flavorful chip is called torcida, meaning cheer party, referencing the habit of friends getting together to cheer for their favorite team. So, let's see, I, I guess, so this is a... A potato chip, I suppose. Oh, kind of a potato chip. So, take a look here. Ah! So we've got. They kind of almost look like it looks like Captain Crunch to me, is what it looks like. But they're very, they're clearly fried. Mmm. Crunchy. Ooh. Yeah. A little pepper flavor to it. Very nice and softly crunchy like um like a really really greasy chip you know it crunches but not for very long so mm. i like it that's pretty good these are those are the ones mm, excuse me those kind of chips are always the ones that I keep off to the side of my computer because I'll nibble on those while I'm making videos for a week sometimes. So what's next? This is another big one here. Let me find the bag. Ah, this is Pipoca Vovozina. I'm sorry, Vovozina Caramelizada. Vovozina Caramelizada. You might see this and think caramel corn. Not quite. This is a specific type of popcorn made only in South America. It's called pipoca, specifically pipoca de ispor, which means styrofoam popcorn. Don't be worried, this doesn't taste like packing peanuts. The real meaning gets lost in translation, as pipoca is best described as puffed corn, which may remind you of Smack's cereal. Okay. While well, Popoca hasn't quite caught on in North America, it's so popular in Brazil that there is a service offering on-demand Popoca delivery straight to your door. Let me turn off the monitor here because I am... My glasses are gleaming, and that is a pain. But let's, um... This little boy is so happy to be receiving these from his, from his grandmother. I hope that's his grandmother. Otherwise, this bag might have a very strange... Sad story indeed. So let's give it a shot. It looks like um, Cracker Jack to me, and I love Cracker Jack, so that's fine. Let's see. Yeah, that smacks. Yeah, definitely. Kind of a stale, popcorny, lightly sweet kind of thing. I can see why they call it styrofoam, though. It does indeed have the consistency of styrofoam. But then, so it smacks. So, pretty good. Pretty good. All right, what do we got next? What's jumping out at me? What's this? What in the hell is this? Okay, this is Frutabella Guay Guay mm, Goyabada. Frutabella Goyabada, I believe. I, I, I'm, I don't want anyone to take my translations here Seriously, in the slightest, my pronunciation's even less so. No extra fluff, 
Guava and sugar are the only two ingredients found here. Guava bars are a common on-the-go snack food in Brazil, but for those who have a bit more time, they'll mix guava with cheese to create a special combination called Romeo e Julieta. Just like the Shakespearean classic, these flavors are meant to be together with the salty cheese helping to mellow out the sweetness of the guava. So I, does that mean there's, no, it says just, gua, just guava and sugar here, but you're supposed to eat it with cheese, I guess, unless there's cheese in here. It, it was very misleading. I'm not sure what they're getting at, but, but let's give it a shot. This looks interesting. Yeah. Mmm. This fruit and sugar. I feel like we had something similar to this. Maybe in the Columbia box. Which I guess would make sense. It's almost kind of figgy. It's got kind of a fig thing going for it. With that sweet sugar on it. Tasty. I like it. Alright. What? Oh gosh, hold on. That's a... I'm learning my lesson here, people. I'm learning not to do the, the hard ones. Uh... So you guys don't have to watch me, you know, suck on this thing endlessly while we get the video going. Okay. This is banana... <laughs> the pronunciations are going to go very badly at this point. Um, bananina cremosa. Bananina cremosa. If your favorite kind of bananas are those of the three-day brown mushy variety, you'll have no problem polishing off this bar. Mm. For the rest of us, it's going to be a little harder to fall in love. Overripe bananas are mixed with sugar to create this highly nutritional snack bar. The bright side, even if you don't like it, you can feel good about eating it. So this is this is basically just mushy banana. Mushy banana, which is... Oh, and it looks basically identical to the sugary guava thing, so... Ooh. Oh. Mmm. No. Well. No, not for me. <laughs> it's funny. I wouldn't have guessed banana. Um, has the same consistency as the guava thing. I think it's done by the same people. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know. Looks the same. Um, that same sugar crystal on the top, but this one is a more dark... Yeah, I guess mushy banana taste to it. It's not terribly appealing, not to me. It's not a not 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 my first choice. Not my first choice, but um, but intriguing, and that's what this is about. Damn it, we are trying new things, and I'll hear nothing to the contrary. Okay, this is Yoki Pakokoa. Pa mm. Yoki Pakoka. Yoki Pakoka. I want to say Yoki Pakoki. Where's the beef? That's the million dollar question when it comes to this crumbly sweet. Centuries ago, native Brazilians mixed cassava flour with peanuts and sugar to create two distinct dishes, both with the same name, pacoca. The first pacoca, a salty dish made with sugar, peanuts, and carne de sol, basically beef jerky. The second pacoca omits the beef ingredient and is simply sugar and peanuts. The latter dish also happens to be one of our favorite candies of all time. You've been warned, it's very crumbly. So we got a little crumbly peanut bar, I suppose. So let's open this thing if we can. We can't, but we're going to try. Oh gosh, yeah, look at that. Kind of a, oh yeah. Just, just falling apart. Oh, oh no, that's nice. Wow. Mm-hmm. Just. I'm tempted to say peanut butter, but that is not peanut butter. It's peanuts, and it is sugar, and that is it, and it's very dry, actually. So, excuse me. Interesting. Pretty good. Okay. Okay, hold on. Let's follow that. What the hell? All right, so, hold on. Butter toffees, mousse de maracuja. Maracuja, maracuja? I'm not sure. 
In Brazil, tart passion fruit mousse is a popular after-dinner dessert. You'll get a chance to sample the famous treat in the form of these unique caramels. Prepare yourself for a soft caramel candy, kind of like Werther's, that's filled with sweet and tangy passion fruit mousse. It's one of the most unique candies we've ever tried. It's surprisingly addicting. And this one is all stuck to the wrapper, which I, I guess that makes sense. Okay, you know that? Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Unique is the word. It's not bad, though. It's true, you got... Mm. There's a word, there's original kind of thing on the outside, although it's chewy. But almost immediately it's overpowered by that passion fruit inside. And I'm starting to think it's going to take, <clears throat> take me 100,000 hours to chew this thing. Let's make it good down here. Oh, God. Oh, my. Okay. Mmm. Tasty. I did like that. That's very, very good. Let's, uh, got a few left here. All right. This is Lacta Beast Wafers. In Portuguese, the word bis means encore or repeat. At concerts, people shout bis at the end if they want the performer to keep going. In the least subtle way possible, the company that makes beasts also wants you to keep going, or at least eating, this delicious eight-layer concoction. The messaging has caught on. Beast wafers are the number one selling chocolate in all of Brazil. So if it's a... Oh, okay, so it's kind of a Kit Kat thing. It's a Kit Kat, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. You got... Little wafer thing. And... Yeah. Kind of a... A staler Kit Kat. Now, I say stale, but the fact of the matter is, is you can never fully tell with these if it's stale, if that staleness, if that kind of chewy quality you get is because that's how it's designed or that it's been shipped along from so far away and in some cases been in packaging for a while. But you can't always tell. It's good though. Yeah, I like that. I always like Kit Kats though, so that's hard to uh, hard to ignore. Mm. Okay, I feel like I'm missing something in here. No, no, we just got some. We just got some extras, which is excellent, which I'm good with. All right, got a couple more here. Jesus. I don't know what to think about this. This is looking interesting. Okay. Garato Serenata de Amor Bonbon. Let's try that again. Garato Serenata de Amor Bonbon. Bonbon. Forget Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Yes, we know it's hard to do because there's a better nut butter on the block. I would pay you so much money to never use the expression better nut butter ever again. Um, <laughs> instead of peanut butter, Serenata de Amor is filled with cashew cream, and the result is a creamy, chocolatey, and just a little salty treat. Translated into English, Serenata de Amor means love serenade, and it's certainly a love affair among Brazilians, as it's one of the most famous and iconic Brazilian candies. And it's... Oh. Oh. Oh, look at that. I, it, it feels like a hard candy. I'm not so. I'm not. I'm nervous about biting into this because it feels kind of hard. Oh no! Here we go. Mmm. So it's chocolate. A little wafer. And cashew cream. Which, if I'm being honest. Tastes just like more sugar. <laughs> I have to wonder how many cashews versus how much sugar went into this particular one. It's um, it's surprising though. 
in the sense that I thought it was going to be a hard candy almost. Okay. I dig it. Alright. Mmm. One last one. Mmm. <laughs> Alright, let's cleanse the palate here. I'm working tomorrow, so I don't have my usual glass of wine. Okay. Finally, we come to the end with this little guy, Brazilian coffee candy. Let's start with a short story, shall we? Back in 1727, a Portuguese diplomat was tasked with giving coffee bean seeds from the French who refused to export them. Under the guise of resolving a border dispute between Portugal and France, the diplomat was able to seduce the governor's wife. As he left France, she slipped him a flower bouquet with coffee bean hidden inside. And that, my friends, is the start of the story of how Brazil became the largest coffee producer in the world. And they're not just the world's largest producer, they're also the world's second largest consumers of coffee. Whether in a cup or these candies, Brazil sure does know good coffee. Oh, Open, damn you. I won't be kept from your coffee deliciousness. Ooh. Kind of looks like a molasses drop. Nice and deep dark brown. Mmm. I love coffee candy. Almost as much as I love coffee. After a really nice... Mmm. So... There we go. So this has been Brazil. Interesting. Almost worth the wait. <laughs> Not my favorite box, but I would have to say the MVP of this one with the picante chips. Really interesting texture in particular. I really like it flavor is really nice and subtle. It's not, it's spicy without being hot, which I'm big on. I don't understand the appeal of just kind of eating hot foods as hot as you can possibly get them. I don't get it. I, it's like a drinking contest. Why are you doing that? How, how about you enjoy your food instead? So in any case, that's been Brazil. Not a big fan of the banana or guava thingies, but the coffee and the pimenta and the um, and, and even the crumbly little peanut thing, I can live with all that. That's pretty good. So uh, we got the clue to next month's box here. It says here they call it the land of smiles, and we wondered why. Our question was answered after a single try. No doubt they're spicy sweet candies and thin cookie sticks, and the ultimate turn that frown upside down fix. I have no idea. That one is usually with the. <laughs> I don't, it's almost like the trolling is usually the clues to the next month's box are kind of obvious. Maybe it'll be obvious to me later, but in any case, that was this month's Universal Yums, Brazil. Hope you enjoyed yourself as much as I enjoyed eating in front of you, which is weird because that's not a thing I, I usually care for. I'm just now considering that fact. Everything is so confusing. Uh, in any case, my name is Phil the Conquista Dork. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We have uh, got a lot of really fun stuff coming up to you. We've got the Oxen Free review on its way. Finally, it took me long enough. I really was dragging my feet with that one. I've been very busy lately. We've got all your favorite Let's Plays and first impressions. We just finished Assassin's Creed 3. And uh, we've got a new Phil Plays a Porno coming your way. So we've got lots of fun stuff in the mix. Please stay tuned. Uh, we've even got uh, the possibility of me uh, picking up World of Warcraft again. Uh, a couple of my co-workers want to start a guild uh, because none of us have played in years and the new expansion Legion has got us very intrigued. I'm very nervous about this because I haven't played World of Warcraft in years and years. And, uh, and it, it's a kind of a thing that drags you in and I like to have a lot of variety on this show. And I worry sometimes when it comes to that. On the other hand, re-examining that world uh, for the first time after years and doing it with a few friends and that sort of thing, what harm could come of that? And if I do end up doing it, you're going to get to watch, you poor, poor motherfuckers. So, 
In the meantime, in between time, my name is Phil the Conquistador. Dork. I will see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Stick a little bourbon past porkies, but you better not drink it slow. Stick a little vodka past wifey's, wifey well, don't have to know. Stick a little whiskey past mommy's, make your sister never tell. Or sneak a little bottle pass past the pole, or else you'll go up to hell. If daddy don't sink a little drinky, daddy gets high and blue. Sneak a little drinky, sneakity do. Sneak a little drinky past you. Sneak a little drinky, sneakity do. Sneak a little drinky past you. Sneak a little drinky, sneakity do. La-di-da-di-da-da-da